Hi, and welcome to Linda K Today. I am so, so delighted to be talking to you today about a really special guest. Now, we have all had one or two things what we decide we're going to put on the desk, we're going to put in the refrigerator, we're going to put in the closet, and somehow or another, all of those things can just kind of stack over each other, can't they? Well, today joining me is somebody that will talk to us about how to declutter, and that's a really important thing, but it starts right here, declutter the brain. So please welcome with me into the studio, Kitty Andrews, CEO and founder of Declutter the Brain. Hi, Kitty, welcome. Hello, hello, Linda, good to be here. Thank you for having me. I am delighted to have you here. Now, Kitty, is decluttering sort of like you've gone, we've all had this experience, right? Where we start in the kitchen and we forgot something that we need to go put into the laundry. And so we go upstairs, we start getting something to go bring and we forget what we were just doing. And now we just set it down and we forget about that. And we see something else because things just talk to us, don't they? Yes. What happens when this is going on for us in say cluttering of your mind? What What's going on there? It, it's, it's due to two things. Number one, we just have naturally busy, busy brains, and especially uh, entrepreneurs, we usually have too many, too many balls in the air juggling things, or if a mom, anybody, all of us have, frankly... Oh, none of us can relate to that, Kitty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Partly the other culprit would be the digital world, uh, the, just the way that things are now. This is this is not our parents' world where things were arguably a, a little bit slower, a little bit more manageable. And now I think that our, our poor beleaguered brains are so bombarded with uh, so much uh, sensory input and expectations. Wait, wait a minute. What about those expectations? Are are those imposed on us from other people or ourselves? You got it. Self-imposed. We feel that we should be able to take in all of the media, whether whether it's print or on TV or social media. We feel that we should be able to mentally ingest all of this and keep it and do something about it. And how is it going to affect my kids? How is it going to affect my business? Well, no wonder we walk into rooms and, one, and forget why we're there or what we've left. I mean, that used to be called sometimes disease. You, you know sometimes? What is that, Kitty? It's a joking name for Alzheimer's. So if you don't, if, it, if it's not Alzheimer's, then you've got sometimes, which is. Sometimes I, we just can't remember where we were, what we were just doing. And then somehow or another, we find our way back. Okay. We get back to something and go, oh my gosh, there's the open laundry basket. And that was what I was just doing. So what would you say? Are, are some tips on how we can get from one spot to the next spot to the next spot without forgetting where we were? Or do you suggest that it's just start with a different plan in mind? It depends on if you're frankly, or if you're already physically decluttered or not, because that I believe is going to help. The more you can streamline things and make things into habits, say for example, you You've left the kitchen, and we hope that you haven't left the stove on with a pot boiling <laughs> over to you. I've never done that before. Never. And if you if you're always taking things uh, things upstairs with you, say if you do have two levels, then you leave something at the bottom of the stairs. Okay, I know that that's going up, and same deal at the top of the stairs. That's going. Okay, well, I just do that because it just you know so many trips up and down the stairs, you get tired. Yes, exactly. you, gotta, you gotta make you can't just go up for one thing you got to go up for five things your question i just want to make sure that i have it clear in my head how do we avoid is that the well, question you see, we we kind of get lost we get we lose track of what we were doing right mm -hmm. 
if we lose track of where we were, we can get lost. If you were going to tell somebody how to declutter and you, and I said, we start with the brain because it is, it does start here. I have asked in a couple, in a couple of polls in workshops that I've done, which is more difficult to, for you to deal with physical clutter or mental clutter and 10 out of 10 people, a hundred percent have replied mental clutter is more difficult. They'll say, Kitty, we know how to pick things up. We just don't know off the floor or off the desk. We just don't do it because our brains are clogged with the should do's. And again, all of the busyness in, in life that, that we're uh, faced with. That's a good case for some mental floss. Yeah, that's right. And prioritizing what's important. And the summer, actually, this is a very well-timed interview because the summer is when you will see on social anywhere people are saying, you know, the, the summer is a great time to step back and say, do I need to be doing all of these things. In my own case, I stopped doing it's, it's some interviews in my Facebook group because I thought, you know, is this necessary? Can I provide value in a different way? Many times, less is more. Doing less will net you, you've, you know, the 80-20 the, the rule. You get 80% of your results from 20% of your efforts. Sometimes stepping back and saying, do I need to do this? Is there an easier way to do this? It comes down, I believe, to mental energy. Perhaps it's been as simple and benign as deciding what to have for breakfast. Have, having as few decisions to make in the morning, then you you keep that mental energy for longer, thus avoiding the, okay, what was I doing now? So it sounds to me like what you're describing is having some habits, having some rituals. What kind of rituals do you recommend for preserving that much energy throughout the day? Uh, it's not for everyone, but I'll tell you what I do and what has worked for some of my clients. That's awesome. Factor in, I'm going to and just throw in here, I and many of my clients are ADHD, which is quite common in the entrepreneurial world. We, we want to do so much and we do the busy, busy brains. Right. And, um, some decisions that, that we do is, uh, I'll go back to streamlining meals. I will not only plan out, but actually prepare my meals, all my breakfasts are done and ready to pull out of the fridge for the week. No thinking required. I don't even have to think about what kind of jam I'm going to put on my peanut butter toast on Thursday. It's written down, <laughs> right? No thought required. My banker even told me yesterday that she does this and she, she was inspired by, I said that I have a different shirt for every, for every day of the week. I know exactly what I'm going to wear. It's just the tie might be different. Going to bed and getting up at the same time every day. Oh, that's a good one. So let's go back to systems because I like this idea of a system. What kind of systems do you like to have that you advise to your clients? I have two answers for that. The first one is uh, piggybacking on what I just said, doing the same thing at approximately the same time, whatever it is, doing your laundry on a certain day, such that if you try to do it at another time, your brain is going, okay, uh, uh, why am I doing it now? And here's another way to train your brain. The most of my system, when I help people to de declutter their homes, we go into the five pillars of your life, your home, your heart, your head, your health, your habits. A lot of that is based on my one system, which is totally adaptable to other things. So the one system is briefly one room at a time, one area of that room at a time, one thing at a time. Let's say, for instance, an area that gets to all of us. The closet. If I were going to try to organize something, I might go, okay, where I spend the most time might be in my master bedroom or the kitchen. Is, is there one priority over the other um, or a suggestion of, well, you spend the most time over there, so you should do that one first? If we go down that road, we'll, I, don't, I don't think I'll be able to answer your question properly. Okay. 
Try, I try, try this. You've got one room at a time, so you're not trying, by that I, I quickly mean that you're not trying to do your office and your basement simultaneously. Plain and simple, your brain is going to forget, where was I? All right, and waste mental energy starting all over again. And the next part is one area of that room at a time. So you've decided to declutter your office. All right, pick one area, whether it's an area on the floor or your desk or what have you. And then you're dealing with one thing at a time, whether it's one piece of paper. Uh, it's tedious, it's time consuming, but it does train and train your brain to uh, maybe I don't need those pieces of paper. Maybe it's bank statements that I can leave online because I don't even need them. Stuff like that. Now, how does this translate to the brain? You ask. Please tell me. All right. And I learned this. Oh, golly, this started coming in very, very handy in January or February when my father be became ill. And so my brain was a torn that way as well, you know, regular daily stuff. And I would find myself brushing my teeth at 5.30 in the morning with just being pummeled mentally with all of the things that needed to be done or that I felt needed to be done. And I didn't have them on a piece of paper in front of me, of course. And the toothpaste would get all over, it would be messy, you know. And I just started to say, all right, I can't do everything at once. I'm going to choose one thing, and what I meant by that uh, was one category. What is the most important category I need to focus on? Banking, perhaps. And then the second part of the system, one part of that category. Okay, I'm going to focus on, let's go with banking, shall we? Because that's, that's a little easier. Yep. I'm going to collect for my services. So another category. Okay, I'm going to pay bills. You concentrate on that one category and you do it well. And your brain is not thinking about everything else. You're telling it, just focus on this, do it well. You won't make mistakes while you're paying your bills. I'm in that one category of I'm paying out bills. All right, I'm paying one bill at a time. You can't pay two simultaneously. It can't be done. The, the, the electronic banking won't let you do it. No. This way... You are slowing your brain down just a little bit and avoiding that frenetic activity. I know that we've gone away from jumping from room to room, from the kitchen to the laundry room, but I'm hoping that this helps because if you can slow your brain down just a little bit on these things that can spend so much mental energy, then you're less likely to go from the kitchen to the laundry room and completely blank out. I can't agree with you more. In fact, Kitty, that same concept I adapted, that I only pay my credit card bills on one single date, and it's always the same date. And then I know two days later that my bookkeeper is going to have all of that information. So if there was an unusual charge or something, he's going to handle that. I, I give tasks that I don't like to do. I can do them, but they take me longer. So I just outsource them. Sure. I also only do my statements for the bank on a different date. So I don't put the banking for the, the bank accounts the same as my credit card accounts. And I have certain charges that I only put on a certain card. So it helps me stay more organized yeah. and stay out of the overwhelmed so what one tip would you give to our listeners that says this is where you start? Are we talking physical decluttering? The client that I'm talking about has been living in a place where the kids grew up. Kids no longer live there. Ah. Maybe the, there was a life uh, event that occurred and they're no longer available. The, the mate is no longer there or incapacitated in some way. What one tip would you give to these people? Because they're in overwhelm. They wouldn't even know where to begin. Thank you for clarifying that. That, uh, that helps me uh, zone in on one thing. Start small. Do not, please do not 
and say, okay, I'm going to start in the basement, which probably has a good 20 years of Christmas decorations. You're shooting yourself in the foot. Start, I, yeah, I have found this works. See, even though it seems counterintuitive, well, I have so much to do, I, I should start in the bigger one. No, because again, the overwhelm. If you start in pretty much the smallest room of your house, and even micro micromanage that and do the closet, the smaller closet in that room. It accomplishes two things. Number one, you're able to focus on just that room, but it won't be as overwhelming. You more likely to succeed. And what does that do? That fuels your confidence then I'm going to go not to the basement, mind you, to the next the next bigger room. You conquer that closet and then you start in another area of that same room. Maybe it's a china cabinet and you conquer that and you're just feeling better and better. And remember the little, the, the little engine that could? So true. But in other areas of your life, you feel more empowered, you feel more in control, and you're not afraid. If the bank is giving you a headache, it just transfers all of this wonderful self-esteem and energy. So true. I'm sure that your listeners out there are, are experiencing things of various different um, degrees of that overwhelm or that distraction that we get into. Like you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, when people go into social media and we get we look at one thing mm -hmm. and then it, it, it's like going through the house with the laundry basket and collecting things, we forget where we were. It's so easy to become so distracted. Why does the mental energy and the physical clutter impact our business and our lives? Well, there's a very practical way. If you can't find your bills, say, for example, you might open a couple of them on the dining room table, a couple more on the kitchen counter. I have seen this. I have done that. Me too. Maybe a couple are in your office. If you don't have an organized, for lack of a better word, system, even just one central place where they, where they all are, you will miss, unfortunately, making your payments on time. Unless you have a wonderful system like what you said about I pay all my, you pay all your credit card bills on the one day, right? And you yep. know, okay, it's the 15th, this is what I'm doing. How else does it affect you? This is a much more insidious way. All right, you come to a call. We'll, we'll assume that you already have this client. They're already working with you and you come to them. It's much worse if it's a, a, a discovery call, but if you are, you come to the call with them and I've got your file somewhere here. Oh, I can't even find a pen. Oh, oh no, I've never done that. Oh, of course I have. Haven't we all done that, Kitty? We oh, have. Oh, goodness. Now, what does that do? It undermines, it undermines the confidence that your client has in you. More importantly, it undermines your own confidence, mm. which shines through back, reflects back to the client. And you'll get through the session and you will do a good job. When you will pull yourself together after about 90 seconds and everything will be will be just fine. Everything will be fine. But if that happens over and over again, you are less likely to have a, a, a renewal or a referral. Kitty, do you have something for our listeners to find you or to know more about to to know, like and trust you? I do have our seven easy steps to conquer physical and mental clutter. They're meant to be followed in order. It comes with uh, seven short little videos, three minutes a piece, so that you never feel alone in the decluttering process because it can be a lonely journey, especially if you've been in your house for a long time. The idea is to keep it decluttered for life so that you uh, having a system so that you never have to do this again, whether you're downsizing, right sizing, or doing what you did, turning it into a and b anything like that. The idea is that once you've done it once, clutter will not, will not come back because you're doing it mindfully. 
Kitty, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciated this time and I know my listeners did. So if you got something out of this, please make sure that you love us up and like and share this stream with others. Thanks again. Thank you, Linda. Hi, Linda here. If you liked this broadcast and you think that someone else would really benefit from that, do us all a favor and share it. And be sure to click on like and follow. Stay tuned.